Good morning, everybody. I'm looking in that one over there. Hey, everybody. Welcome Great to, to our see house you today. So we're just going to be really honest. We were all prepared in plenty of time this morning. Everything set up, technically sorted out, everything fine. And then about three minutes ago, we managed to drop a glass of wine uh, all over the kitchen floor. So we're slightly been running, running around trying to clear up the glass. But it smells amazing. Yeah. So if only we had smell vision you would love it. Yeah. So my question today for you to put in the chat is... What's your favourite smell? That wasn't what it was going to be. <laughs> oh, God, but no. anyway, that's fine. What's your question? Uh, what? No, that's fine. What's your... What's, what, what, what would you... Oh, I don't know. What's your favourite smell? Why don't you let us know in the chat? Yeah, let us know what you like to smell. We've got a lovely smell of wine um, em, em, floating up from the kitchen floor at the minute. So that's very nice. It's great to be with you. Welcome to Winchester Vineyard Church. Yep. Um, we are here again live online. I'm Nigel and this is Joe. And uh, we, uh, along with a fantastic team, we lead the church. And uh, as you know, we've been doing this. We've been uh, leading church online. Well, we've been doing it live like this since the start of the year. And we are loving it and we are loving the interaction. Now, I know there are some good comments in the chat, but I haven't, because of the, the whole the wine, wine glass <laughs> situation, I haven't had a chance to sit and just look at them. So I'll, um, I'm sure we'll catch up with what you're all talking about uh, later. Um, that would be great. But we have some great stuff for you this morning in our service. We've got a guest speaker. Um, all the way from America, from the vineyard in uh, Columbus, Ohio. He's a wonderful uh, speaker. Joe will introduce him later. Uh, we've got some worship. And uh, we've also, we've been praying this morning uh, with our, just a few of us got together before the service. And we were just trying to listen to God. And we had this real deep sense that God wanted to do some things today. There's a real lovely sense of expectation uh, around around church this morning. And all that God wants to do, we have some ideas um some words which we think the Holy Spirit has shared with us, which we'll share with you after worship, uh, which might be for particular people. But whoever you are and wherever you're watching from, uh, we you are so welcome. We're so glad you're here. And I wonder how your heart is today. You know, uh, many of us are kind of sitting, waiting to see what the announcements will bring tomorrow. Um, a number of us who've got kids that are of school age have been having half term this week, so a break from homeschooling. But just waiting to see the announcements from the government tomorrow and to see how things begin to unlock. And one of the things that we re were reminded of this morning as we prayed was that God is the same yesterday, today and forever that our hope is in Jesus. And so as we sit and wait for our answers today, we don't have to wait to see what the government says. Actually, we can live in hope and we can live in confidence today mm. because God is with us. We know that he loves us. Mm. And so whether that's your current experience or not, um, we invite you today to come and open your heart to him and to engage in that. Mm. Now, back towards the beginning of the year, someone in our church family sent us an email. Um, they had been praying for the church and the, the message that they kind of um, heard from God, they shared with us and I thought it was really relevant for today. So they had um, a, a kind of image in their mind's eye of um, a tree with some yellow flowers around the base of it. And we pulled up a picture of it just so you can kind of help you imagine it. And if you're a gardener, you might know that these flowers are called aconites. Um, and as the friend looked um, in closely, she could see these specific flowers and she thought, well, I wonder what, what that means. What's all that about? And she looked up aconites online and saw that they can have medicinal properties and that one of the things that they do is that they um, deal with, that you can, they can be used to make medication to help our hearts. And so they can help our hearts get back in rhythm. And she said it reminded her that sometimes our hearts are really influenced by what's going on around us, the messages that we hear in the news, the things we read on the media, the things from the fear from people around us. And actually God wants to steady and strengthen our hearts so that we in turn can bring that steadiness and that strength and that confidence in him to those people who are around us too. And so that's our prayer today, that as we connect with God through all the different ways this morning, that our hearts would be steadied and strengthened and we would be people who could then bring that same peace and confidence mm. to others. Yeah, so why don't we pray and then we're going to watch a short video. I'll explain that in a minute. So Father, thank you that you love to meet with us wherever we are, whatever crisis has happened in the morning. Mm. You are here and you are God and you are with us. You never change. And today we turn our hearts towards you. And as much as we just say, yes, please, come Holy Spirit, come to us wherever we are. Mm. Come and steady our hearts, come and remind us who you are mm. and remind us who we are too. Mm. Amen. Amen. Just before you pray, 
Thank you for your comments in the chat. People are citing their favourite smells as hot coffee, strawberries, my girl's chocolate brownies, vanilla essence. Ooh, nice. Freshly cut grass. Um, bacon. Oh, yeah. when you ca- Bacon when you're camping. Ooh. Freshly baked bread and fresh ground coffee. Oh, and a cake baking in the oven. Wow, goodness. And the smell... Oh, someone's written the smell of the sea. I like oh, that. Yeah, I haven't smelled that oh. for a long while. Looking yeah, forward to true. smelling that one again. Oh, Nigel Jameson. The, the smell of a steam locomotive. There's a, there's a train <laughs> fan for you. Anyway, thank you. Excellent suggestions. It does smell a bit like a brewery in this kitchen. <laughs> um, but as we said, if you've just joined us, oh, we, we nice. managed to drop our glass of communion wine on the floor just before we started this morning so we'll be finding another one and cleaning up in a little while anyway we've got a video to show you we have you may well have seen this video a couple of weeks ago at our vineyard national gathering um i watched it and was really moved by it and i thought it'd be a great thing just to remind us to focus our hearts and attention on jesus again so here it is There is a story in the Old Testament. Judah are surrounded by multiple armies, facing overwhelming odds. They cannot win this battle, and the king calls all the people to pray and cry out to God. So they pray and cry out, We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And God speaks, This is not your battle. The battle is the Lord's. And Judah are saved. What do we do when we are surrounded, when we are confronted with overwhelming odds, when it seems like all hope is lost, when our go-to strategies just aren't working? Where do we turn when our strength is spent, when our well is dry? Where do we look when everywhere we look we see fear and loss, when the night feels long and the dawn seems to fail, when health breaks, when wealth shakes, when the ground that once seemed so solid cracks. Where do we go? Where do we look? We feel it, don't we? As much as anyone, the fear, the anxiety, the brokenness, the sorrow. We're not immune. We are mortal, fragile human dust and breath. We have no superpower. We're not invincible. We weep with those who weep, and we must. We feel the darkness around, and we should. We are broken-hearted over the brokenness, and we have to be. But we are not without hope. Never without hope. No matter how dark, bleak, and sad. No matter how lost, fearful, anxious. No matter the size of the army that surrounds us. We are never without hope. There is yet somewhere to look. We cry out along with the whole world. We don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. We cry out with our friends and families, with our cities and nations. We don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. But even if no one else does, the Church of Jesus Christ have to finish the sentence. And we do it for ourselves and we do it for the world. We have to finish the sentence. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Hope has a name, and his name is Jesus. Everything, everywhere, may fall and fail, but he never will. He is the solid ground, the firm anchor, the unshakable I am. The first, the last, the Alpha, the Omega, the one who holds the world in his hands, hands pierced and scarred with our brokenness, but hands that hold all things together. He is the light that no darkness can extinguish, the life that death cannot conquer. No matter how bad, how broken, there is always hope. So let's take our place, church. Let's take our place, vineyard, for the sake of our hearts, for the sake of our churches, for the sake of our community, for the sake of the world. Let's take our place and cry out to God in prayer. Cry out with everything we have. We may be weak, poor, blind, naked, 
surrounded on every side. We may not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. We fix our eyes on him, and we wait, like Joshaphat, for the battle is the Lord's. We wait like Abraham, in hope against hope, confident in the God who works miracles. We wait like Elijah, listening for the sound of heavy rain, though the sky may be blue. We wait like David, listening for the sound of marching in the balsam trees. God, you are on the move. You haven't stopped working. Your purposes haven't been frustrated. You haven't been taken by surprise or caught off guard. Our eyes are on you. So may our weakness drive us to our knees. May our poverty open us up to your power, O oh God. May our deep desperation sit upstream of a great awakening, of a generation-changing move of your spirit. So we take to our knees. That is our place. We are ready for you to move, O oh God. Desperate, hungry, longing. We hear the rain. We see the cloud. We hear the marching in the trees. We are ready, waiting, expectant. We may not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Hi there. Um, I hope you were impacted by that video in the same way that I was. Uh, I actually saw it uh, probably about two weeks ago now. And to be honest, it's haunted me ever since. And as we're going into a time of prayer now, it just seems just to set us up beautifully. Our eyes are on you. Mm. Yeah, we thank you, Lord, that you are in control. We are in your hands. We may feel anxious or brokenness and sorrow, but we are never without hope. Help us to put our hope in you and to look to you at all times. Hope has a name and it is Jesus. So Psalm 121 says, so let's lift our eyes to the hills because it's where our help comes from. Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So let's give some space now for our own prayers, maybe for situations and worries and concerns that we're having. Our eyes are on you, Lord. Let's uh, also pray now for our government. Uh, both national, local uh, and indeed international, that they will make good decisions in these coming weeks. So let's pray. Mm. Father, we thank you uh, for our government. Lord, we pray that in the next few days and coming weeks that governments across this world and in this nation will make good, godly decisions uh, that will benefit all. Father, we ask that you will come and you will fill them with your wisdom. You'll help them to cast aside party politics and be guided, Lord, ultimately by you. Come, Lord Jesus. So let's just for a few minutes, if you or a few seconds, if you can think of politicians that you may know, maybe your, your MP or your local councillors, maybe ministers of the government. Let's just pray for them now. And we also pray for our doctors and nurses dealing with this intense pressure at the moment. Father, just we pray, we just grant them resilience in their weariness and for daily strength to be able to cope. And we also just pray for people that we know that are vulnerable and maybe scared, the frail, the sick and the elderly. And also for those that have lost maybe family members and friends at this time. God of comfort, just come now. Our eyes are on you. Mm. 
Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. So let's keep in that presence of Jesus now as we enter into a time of worship in the front room and the back. Our eyes mm -hmm. are on you. what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what freedom looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. This fear cannot survive when we praise you. 
walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall but you have never felt me yet waiting for change to come knowing the battles won I for have never failed me yet promise still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness still in your this is my confidence, you've never failed me yet. I know the night won't last, your word will come to We'll sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. I have will sing. still says great is your faithfulness your faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you've never failed me your promise still stands great is your faithfulness
And a massive thank you to Graham and Lynn and the rest of the team there for mm -hmm. um, recording some worship for us. Um, wonderful worship. And also thank you to David and Alison for leading our prayers before that. Um, that's and if you just joined us this morning, welcome. I'm Jo, this is Nigel. Hello. You're at Winchester Vineyard Church from our home. Whether or not you <coughs> plan to come this morning or whether you've just kind of come upon us today, we're really glad you've joined us. Now, we've only got a couple of notices today, but before we do that, we'd love to just share some words with you. You know, part of how we do our faith, um, it's a really important part, is that we learn to hear the voice of God. We learn to listen, to, and that's part, actually that's partly what our whole be still series has been about it's been about a bit quieting quietening ourselves enough so that we can hear the voice of God and um, so we are learning to listen to what the Lord's saying and this morning in our prayer time together um, a number of us were just trying to listen um, and uh, see if the Lord was saying anything particular for this morning and we had a number of words which we're just going to share with you now um, and we just, if, if any of them resonate with you, then in a moment, we'd just love to pray for you. If this is, feels a bit weird, it's, it doesn't need to be weird. Um, if this is new to you, this is just us trying to hear what we think God is saying and share it with you. We might get it wrong. It might not mean anything, but we'd rather take the risk on the off chance that it might be right and that God might use this to, you know, speak to or even minister or heal or help somebody so here's just a few words you're going to share the first one yeah so paul um remember something had happened this week he woke up in um, one of the mornings this week and in his mind's eye he had an Im image of somebody's um right wrist that needed healing and he thought oh i wonder if somebody needs healing today so he had to go to the dentist anyway had an appointment he went to the dentist um asked somebody asked the dentist if they had any problems with their wrist and there was nothing wrong and then went to the reception at the end in order to pay and said to the lady do you have a problem with your right wrist and she was really shocked and she said yes I injured it a couple of years ago and in fact you know I, I can't believe you're asking me this and he said well why is that and she said because I just woke up this morning I thought I could really do to get this fixed I could really do to get this better <laughs> so Paul said um, I'd love to pray for you so it was there and then he prayed and he commanded the wrist be healed and there was a slight improvement so he tried it out and the, it was slightly better and so he offered to pray again which he did and um, the wrist got better again. Now it wasn't completely healed, but the lady at reception was just really amazed and surprised um, that God had kind of got her attention really and really delighted with the result of it. And Paul remembered that this morning and said, I wonder if there's just somebody else today who's got a right wrist that needs healing. So if you have, we'd love to pray for you in a moment. Or if you have any wrist that needs healing, left or right. <laughs> or middle. If that's, if that's you, we'd love to pray for you. Mm -hmm. As well as that, when we were praying this morning, somebody, uh, in fact, two or three different people felt that there was something around people's toes, that people had pain uh, when they were walking. So again, if that's you, if you have a... a, a a problem with your toe or toes if walking is difficult what in some way then we'd love to pray for you and also somebody who sadly has had a pet who's died this week and god just wants to remind you that he knows and that he loves you the next one feels um feels a bit uh, out there but we are taking risks because we think that god might want to do something we're we're prepared to look a bit foolish if it doesn't work out but this one is to do with somebody who uh, has been injured by a tree now that sounds like a really bad film or something doesn't it but i don't mean that I just mean maybe you fell out of a tree maybe a tree uh, fell on you maybe it was recent maybe it was in the distant past something and some sort of injury uh, a related, car accident re related, related to, a to a tree if that's you we'd love to pray and finally um just a, an image of somebody who today is wearing a blue jumper with green sleeves on the jumper and a sense that if that's what you're wearing today, God just says he knows you and you are his treasure. So look, if any of those apply to you, we want to pray for you right now. Um, it would be great to uh, put a note in the chat. It would encourage those who are trying to listen and hear God. Um, it would be especially great to put a note in the chat if, if uh, something happens as a result of this. But even if it doesn't, um, if that applies to you, God is calling out your name and we would love to pray. Yeah. It may be as well that you've got something else going on you that we haven't mentioned today. <coughs> Excuse me. But... Um, but we'd love to pray for you anyway. So if there's something going on that we can pray for, put a note in the chat. We might end up doing it like this or we'll definitely pray uh, via, the via the chat. The hosting will definitely pray one way or the other. We would love to pray for you. So look, if that is you or if you have anything else going on that you are just concerned about right now, any part of your body that is in need of a physical healing, um, then, then if you can and if it's safe and legal to do so, put a hand on it or if there's somebody with you, uh, get them to lay a hand on it and we're just going to pray and we're just going to stop we're going to wait on the Holy Spirit so Holy Spirit we thank you that you are ministering here mm -hmm. and now in our midst Lord even though we are not gathered together in the same room you are with each and every one of us and we know that you are speaking to us and so I pray for all of those 
who we've, who um, are identifying this morning, anyone who's got an issue, any issues with toes, anyone injured, injured by a tree, somebody with a blue jumper with the green, green arms on it, somebody who's got wrist issues, any of those things, Lord, mm. um, we want to pray, Holy Spirit, for you to come right now mm. and bring your healing. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Just come, we pray. Mm. Come, we pray. Somebody's put a note in the chat saying, somebody had a test had pain in her toes which is interfering with running so there's one mm. pray for her yeah pray toes for be tests. healed in jesus name and for anybody else yeah, who is experiencing restored. restricted movement again mm. just allow the holy spirit to touch you we pray for healing mm. powerful healing in the name of jesus and this might be new to you you don't even need to be somebody who would call yourself a follower of jesus or a christian if you any of these conditions relate to you just open your your hands if you're sitting there quietly and just say yes please lord and mm. invite him to come and to touch you and we know that god is moving we know that he knows each and every one of us we know that he knows what's going on in our hearts he knows the mm. secrets of our hearts he knows the things that we're feeling mm. thank you lord. just thank you for your presence holy spirit mm. thank you thank you for your presence holy spirit one other word that we uh, was shared was about somebody who was in need of provision, mm. somebody whose finances were struggling. Now, we talk about this quite regularly because this is a tricky time for some people. Mm. But if you are somebody who's struggling with your finances, um, the first thing we want to do is we want to encourage you and say that we can find people to help. We have people connected with the church who can help. And if you are struggling and you need some help, just drop us an email uh, to hello at winchestervineyard.org. And we would love to help. But we're also going to pray because we know that God is a God of provision. We've seen that in our own story. We've seen our own personal story many times, many times. And uh, in the church's story as well, throughout last year, despite all the uncertainty, uh, the Lord provided for us. Um, our finances were in a better place at the end of the year as a church than they were at the start of the year, which is incredible, really. Um, uh, and so we know that God is a God of provision and he will provide for all that he needs to provide for. And so I want to pray for you particularly right now if you are struggling with that. So, Lord, we just pray for those who are in need of provision right now. We lift them and their stories to you. Lord, for those who are wondering how their family is going to cope or wondering how life is going to be. what have, For those whose lives are full of uncertainty, for those whose job is just... Un unsure they're unsure what the future looks like for those mm. who are struck down by fear or panic or anxiety because of finances or employment mm. we pray your blessing on them and we pray that you would be very close to them and provide for all that they need mm. we pray that they would know your peace and your presence mm. in jesus name mm. and while we're on that if you are somebody who does normally give to the church, uh, obviously we can't do that um, in, in the building in this season, but we do have a slide which shows you the different ways that you can give uh, to the church. We're incredibly grateful to all the generosity of the people in this church. And if you have joined recently and you want to know more about what that is, have a look at the, uh, at the giving page. Um, if you are able to gift aid, that really helps. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. Uh, we'll just leave that slide on for a moment and then I'm gonna pray and give thanks to God again for all his provision for us. So, Father, we thank you for your incredible provision for all of our needs. We thank you for those who've given this month already, for those who are gonna give. We thank you for all of the money that's been given to us as a church, and we pray that that money gets used for your kingdom purposes. We could never outgive you. We could never exceed in generosity in the way that you can. We're just so grateful we bless all those who give we bear, we bless the money that's been given and we pray that it would bless you in jesus name amen amen and it's great to see um, many of you interacting on the chat thank you for that sorry to hear that so many of you've got painful toes but it's wonderful that we can pray for one another and so we'd love to hear how you're getting on through the service those of you who are experiencing god touching you and healing you some of you won't know like tess until you go out and, and run later on um, but also, if you're part of a life group, a part of the church, one of our small groups, do ask your life group members to continue to pray for you too. This is a really practical way that we can support one another. And isn't it amazing that God is aware of the tiny things like our toes, as well as the huge things like our finances. Mm. Just before our talk, a just quick reminder that after our talk, we're going to be sharing communion together. And so if you have, if you're able to get wine uh, or juice and some bread, that would be great. And have it ready. 
uh, in about 20 minutes time when the talk is finished but Jo's going to introduce our guest speaker today. Yeah so um, if you've been tracking with us for a while you will know that John and Debbie who lead the Vineyard Movement have invited friends of the Vineyard from around the world and within the UK and Ireland to um, record messages for us for all the different Vineyard churches. So we had Mike Pellavacci the yeah, other week. Yeah we did um, and we've, we've had, had Steve Nicholson, we've had um, Andrew McNeil, different people at different times and one of the folk they invited to speak to us is a guy called Charles Montgomery. He's a teaching pastor at a church in the States at um, in Chicago and he um, recorded this message before Christmas. It was a while ago now but we listened to it and thought oh I'm, that sounds like that could be a message for us particularly as a church family and it feels like it fits in really well at the end of our Be Still series and mm. particularly at this time within the pandemic. And so we're in for a treat. His style is maybe a bit different to that which, you know, we, we're used to. But do listen because he opens up the Bible in a wonderful and clear way. And I think his message is for us today. So Charles Montgomery. Well, praise the Lord. Vineyard UK, my name is Charles Montgomery and I am a campus pastor and a teaching pastor at Vineyard Columbus in Columbus, Ohio, USA. And I am deliciously delighted to deliver this message by invitation of your Vineyard UK leaders and my friends, Pastor John and Debbie Wright. Especially in a time when across the world, we are going through this wilderness called COVID-19. And if you're like me, you might find yourself asking some questions like, how long Lord? Or how long do I have to endure this? Or better yet, is there a way out of this? And that's what I want to talk about today. What is the way from God's perspective out of this wilderness of COVID-19? What I want to suggest is that if you want to get out of it, we can't go over it. We can't go around it. We can't skip over it, but we've got to go through it. So I'm entitling this message, the way out is the way through. And I want to ask you in your quiet meditative moments to read Exodus 16 in its entirety, but because of the length of the text and the confinements of time, let me just give you a context of what it's about. God the Father has led Israel out of Egypt and into the wilderness. And it's fair to say that he has brought them a mighty long way from 400 years of slavery and through the Red Sea. And it's there at the Red Sea, they see Pharaoh, the most powerful man on earth, tossed around like a rag doll. He's left there in shambles with his army at the bottom of the sea. And the children of Israel see once again the power of God. And witnessing the power of God prepares them now in the wilderness to see the providence of God. Particularly when they arrive to a place called Elam. And Elam is just a great place to be. Let me tell you why. Elam means the place of large trees. Friends, Elam had 12 springs of water and plenty of shade from the desert sun. In other words, Elam is just an ace place to be. Elam is a place where everything is copacetic. Elam is a place where you can be comfortable. Let me be more specific. Elam is a place where your pay is consistent. Elam is a place where your business is doing well. It's a place where your favorite football team brings home the championship, where everybody in your family is getting along. I tell you, Elam is an ace place to be. Here's the problem. God does not always allow God's children to linger in Elam for long. Why? Because God is not focused on our comfort. On the contrary, God is committed to our growth. Growth for God's children is on the agenda. And in order to grow, he takes us sometimes through the wilderness. So here's the question we need to ask today. How does God grow us in the wilderness? I'm glad you asked. He grows, first of all, by allowing us to live with some uncertainty. Let me show you how it works in the text. The Israelites have been in the desert for about a month. They're some 30 days removed from slavery in Egypt. And 
Just like in chapter 15, when you read it, their resources are scarce. And the Israelites are running short on supply. They open their cupboards and the cupboards are bare. They open the refrigerator and all they see is their reflection. In other words, they have no food. And to add insult to injury, remember, they are in the desert. And in the desert, no supermarkets exist. <laughs> there is no Morrisons. There's not even an Aldi. They do not know where the food is going to come from. And if that's not a picture of uncertainty, I don't know what is. They're facing a famine. They don't know where the food is going to come from. And in the course of time, the Bible says they became hungry. And just like when you and I are hungry and our, our stomachs grumble, their stomachs grumble. In fact, their whole being grumbled. They murmured against Moses to the point where Moses just has to say, why are you grumbling to me? Why are you arguing with me? Your argument is not against me. Your argument is with God. In other words, Moses reminds them that even in the midst of uncertainty, that God is right there and that God hears your cry and God hears your concern and God hears your complaint. And here is God's response in um, Exodus 16, 4. God says, I am going to make it rain from heaven, rain with bread, I should say, from heaven for you. But here's what's interesting. Bread in the Bible is called manna. Mates, manna was like a dew that, that descended from heaven. And God fed the Israelites with manna for 40 years. But here's what caught my attention about manna. It's interesting to note that the word manna does not really mean bread. Manna is a Hebrew word that really means, what is this? Meaning this. Manna is not a noun, but manna is a question. The Hebrews went out in the morning, picked up the dew and said, man, uh, what's this? They had never seen it. They had never tasted it. They didn't even know if they would like it. They didn't know if it would sustain them in a season of uncertainty. So they woke up every morning and they said, what's this? Here's something else that's interesting. Even after they tasted it and knew it was food, they never called it food or better yet bread, but they always called it manna. That made me curious and wonder, why did they wake up every morning with a question? And the Holy Spirit started speaking back to me. And he said, Charles, you've got to keep in mind again where they are. Remember, they are in the wilderness. They are in a season of uncertainty. And when you are living in a season of uncertainty, you have more questions than you have answers. And I don't know about you, but it seems like that's where many of us, no matter where we are in the world, if not all of us, it's where we are today. We're living in a time where there seems like there's more questions than answers. We don't know how long we'll be in this situation. We still don't know all of the ways this virus is spread. We don't know when we'll get a vaccine. We don't know when the civil unrest that's happening all around the world will abate. There are just some things collectively that we don't know. But if we're honest, not just collectively, but personally, there are some things that some of us just don't know. There's somebody listening to me right now and you're saying, Pastor, that's me. I'm living in a place right now where I have more questions than I have answers. And the more and more I find myself asking God, why? God, why did you let that happen? Or Lord, why did you keep that from happening? How did I get sick and they didn't? How is it that they are employed and I was dismissed? Why did you let my loved one die? Why didn't you let my marriage or my relationship work? And I need to be honest. Sometimes on this side of life's river, all of our questions don't get answered. And even as a pastor, I don't have all of the answers. But before I move to the next emphasis of the text, allow me to offer you a response. My response 
is akin to Moses' response in the text. The people ask Moses, the man of God, a question. But Moses responds with a declaration. He basically says, God will provide. You see, my sis, my brothers and sisters, I'm not able to answer your question, but God provides. I don't know why you're going through what you're going through, but God provides. I don't know how long you'll have to go through it, but this is what I do know. God provides. I don't understand your family dynamics, but, but I know that God provides. It may not be how you envisioned it. It may not be how you scripted it out, but the God I serve does provide. Again, it may not be what you expect or how you expected the, the script of your life to play out, but we have a father who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And he has a script he wants us all to follow. In fact, that is, that's the second way he grows us, by testing us to see if we'll follow his instructions. He says, in verse four, he says, I'm gonna make it rain. But when I do that, he goes on to say, I'm going to test my children to see if they'll follow my instructions. And of course, he gives some very specific instructions regarding how they are to handle the manna. Here's the first instruction. He says, first things first. Here's what that means. God says, when you get up in the morning, I want you to go outside and gather manna. And I want you to do that first. Look at verse 21 with me. It says, each morning, everyone gathered as much as they needed. And when the sun grew hot, it melted away. What that suggests is that they waited too long to collect the manna in the morning, the manna would disappear. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. Friends, when you are in a season of uncertainty, how you start your day helps shape how you spend the rest of your day. Hear me. When you are in the wilderness, what you do first matters. It matters physically, it matters emotionally, and it matters spiritually. So let me ask you a question, particularly as we all move through this pandemic. How do you start your day? Do you start it on Facebook or do you start it with your face in the book? The word of God. Do you get on Twitter or TikTok or do you take time to give thanks to God for another day? Do you post on Instagram to see how many likes you get? Or do you link up with the one whose image you are made in and who loves you the most? How do you start your day? Opening your emails or reading God's love letter to you? How do you start your day? Friends, I want to encourage you. First things first, go get your manna and remind yourself how God provides. When you wake up in the morning, and you're able to think clearly, that's manna. When you walk into your house or your flat and remember you have a roof over your head, that's manna. When you turn on the shower and feel the water running down your back, that's manna. When you smell the fresh aroma of a good cup of coffee and remind yourself of how good God's been and how much uh, manna he's provided for you even in the midst of this pandemic, that's manna. And I'm bringing this up because maybe, just maybe, one of the silver linings in the storm cloud called COVID that we're going through right now is that it helps us to gain a new perspective, a new appreciation, if you will, for the blessings God provides. Just think about it. For 40 years, the Israelites ate nothing but manna. All they have to sustain them is manna, suggesting that God is saying, I'm going to teach you to appreciate what only I can provide. So I'll shut some businesses down and I'll shut some schools down and I'll shut the gym down because what I want to know is, can you identify and appreciate how good God has been when I remove all of these things from your daily diet or your daily routine? Can you appreciate the things that only God can provide. Mates, I'm here to tell you that even in a pandemic, 
the God we serve promises to provide for our needs. Now notice, I did not say God promises to provide for our greeds, but I did say God promises to provide for our needs. And in verse 16, it says this. It says, when the manna comes, everybody can go collect, but you can only collect as much as you need. And I don't have to tell you what happened. Some of them did the same thing that many folk, at least here in America, did at the beginning of COVID-19. They ran out and they hoarded everything they could get their hands on. In other words, they collected more than they needed. Consequently, because there were some who collected out of their greed, there were others who couldn't collect enough. And when God saw their greed usurp their needs, God engages in, let's just say, some biblical justice. It's right there in verse 17. Read it after the, bar, uh, after the broadcast. The Lord goes to those who are greedy and takes the excess that they have and he gives it to those who are in need. Because the Lord declares that it's a shame for some of us to live in greed with excess while we know somebody next to us who's in need can be blessed with the extra that we have. So here's a question to ponder. While we are going through the wilderness, is there somebody you can bless with the extra that you have? Because of the truth be told, some of us have more than what we need. And there are others who don't have enough. And if you're listening to me and you don't think you have enough to make it through the wilderness, here's the last thing I want to encourage you to do. Trust God one day at a time. That's what these Israelites learned while they were going through. They could only collect enough for one day at a time, except on the Sabbath where they collected double. They could only get enough manna for 24 hours. So here's the lesson. Focus on what today brings and don't fret over tomorrow. Take things one day at a time. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we don't have dreams or, or strategically forecast for our future. I don't believe that's what this text is saying. You see, I believe what the text suggests is that you and I can be so preoccupied with tomorrow that we miss out on the joys and the blessings God wants to give us today. You remember that famous prayer that Jesus taught his disciples? He says, when you pray, pray like this. Give us this day our daily bread. In other words, teach me, Lord, to appreciate the blessings you give me today. That's what Jesus is teaching us. Trust God for one day at a time. What God wants to know is while you're going through the wilderness, he wants to know, do you trust me? Not your bank account, not your networks or your resources. God is asking, do you trust me? Because God says, if you can trust me, you'll look to me and what you'll discover is I'm right there. I'm still right there providing. I'm right there waiting to have a relationship with you. So let me close by asking somebody today, how's your relationship with God? Is it growing or is it dwindling? Or does it exist at all? If it's growing, praise the Lord, keep growing. But if it's dwindling or non-existent, I wanna encourage you to pray this prayer with me right now. God, I feel like I'm in the wilderness. So much in my life is uncertain. And I don't know how I or even my loved ones are going to make it. But I believe that your word is true and that you will provide. So Lord, help me to see the manna and appreciate the manna and obey your word. Help me through your Holy Spirit to trust you for one day at a time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. My friends, if you need further prayer, I do want to encourage you to reach out to one of our vineyard pastors. 
I know that they'll be happy to do it. This is Pastor Charles Montgomery telling you we can make it through the wilderness and through these uncertain times by continuing to obey the word of God and trusting God to provide. I love you, but God loves you best. And as we say here in America, one love. God bless you. Oh, man. Fantastic. Wow. Oh, wow. I hope you enjoyed that as much mm. as we did. Um, we are so grateful yeah. to be part of the Vineyard family uh, in the UK and across the world. And we're so grateful for uh, just all the wonderful people who are part of that, including Charles. We heard him speak mm. at our national conference maybe three or four years ago. Mm. Um, he's got a fan fantastic way of, of speaking. And as somebody said in the chat, what a completely rooted in the Bible, but mm. so relevant for this time. Um, so I hope that you found that encouraging. We certainly did. And we just want to take a few moments to respond to that. Um, and we're going to celebrate communion together in just a moment. So if you have juice or wine or bread, um, get that ready. But before we do, I misnamed him at the beginning. Charles Montgomery is from Columbus, Ohio. Mm -hmm. So you can follow their website if you want to hear some more for him. Or look in the archives on the Vineyard Church's website too. And you can see the talk that he did at our national gathering. Or what well, he, did, Leaders Conference. he did it every morning. Every morning, he did a that's series right. Of Bible a couple studies, of years so ago. If you want to follow him brilliant up. stuff. Yeah. yeah, he's got a great style. I love that. I, lo I especially love that quote. I put it on, uh, on, um, on Facebook here. Do we start our morning on Facebook? book or with our faces in the book <laughs> that <was laughs> <That's brilliant. good. laughs> right anyway so we're going to be showing communion now this is a period of lent so i don't know how many of you shared pancakes on tuesday evening mm -hmm. that's the the marks the kind of beginning of the lent period as we use up all the sweet things in our home and we have a, a period of preparation and getting ready for easter mm -hmm. um what we've decided to do as a church family is that each Sunday we will share communion together and a different person from or a different couple from the church family will be leading us each week, just helping us look at a different perspective of communion. So it's so, going to be us this morning, but it'll yeah. be different people. Yeah, that's right. For the next Absolutely. few Sundays. Yeah, yeah. So this Sunday, as I was preparing, I was thinking about Jesus sharing um, the, his last meal with his friends. You know, in um, Matthew chapter 26, I'm just going to read a little bit from there. Oh, who's moved Matthew? <laughs> it hasn't moved. It hasn't moved. It's here in the Bible. Just my note because my note thing is really tiny. If you know the story, Jesus sent his disciples ahead of him to go to a place where they could prepare the Passover meal. This was an annual celebration that all Jews um, enjoyed with family and friends. And so they went and they found a, a large room and prepared the meal for them. And it says in the Bible that they sat together with Jesus at the table. And I was imagining that and remembering happy meals that we've had in our home. Mm times when we could um, welcome extended family and friends and just enjoy being round the table together. And we really look forward to those days like again. It does feel like a long those, time. <laughs> but maybe you might just want to think for a moment about a really happy mm. meal that you shared either around your table or somebody else's. You don't mean a McDonald's happy meal either, do you? Well, <laughs> if that was a happy time for you, that's a good one to share. <laughs> but the things that I remember at those kind of meals with people who I love and love to be with are being able to talk about the things that make us laugh and smile and also the things that are challenging and difficult. And it strikes me that as Jesus invites us to the table at communion, he wants to invite us to that same sense of his presence and intimacy. And so as we share communion together, it's not just a routine or a rote that we go through. It is something we were instructed to do. He says this is what we should do to remember him, but it is supposed to be a place of encounter. And you know, in our movement, sometimes we think that we encounter God in the, the exciting worship or in those times where we're praying for somebody. And those are the moments where we sense his presence. But I just invite us today to pause and think about this table, probably a, either a coffee table in front of you, maybe your kitchen table, or maybe you're just balancing communion on your knee. But this being a place of encounter with Jesus. Mm. This was the meal that he shared with his disciples as a foretaste of what was happening. Rather than just telling them again about his death, he told them many times. He gave them some symbols because as people who forget things so easily, sometimes symbols help us remember. And so I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 26. And this is what it says. 
As they were eating, this was the Passover meal, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, take this and eat it for it's my body. And he took a cup of wine and he gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, each of you drink from it for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It's poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. And we're going to share bread and wine in a moment together. But I was just struck too by a short passage from 1 Peter chapter 2. And it reminds us about what Jesus did. And it says this. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross. And that's what the, the bread represents. So that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. So it's an invitation into relationship with him and into transformation, change lives, being dead to sin and living for what is right. It goes on to say, by his wounds you are healed. Once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. And so today's an invitation Perhaps today you're coming to Jesus for the very first time and you want to recognise his invitation on the cross that he died to carry your sin in his body so that you could be dead to sin and alive to what is right. Perhaps today you're longing for someone to be the guardian of your souls, to be your shepherd, to show you the way ahead as Charles so, so beautifully described. And if that's the case, as you take bread and wine, I invite you to open your heart to Jesus and just say, yes, please. I want to have this exchange with you today, Jesus. I want to live your way, to stop living my way, to recognise what you've done on the cross for me and to live your way. Perhaps that's a decision that you made for the first time a long time ago. And if that's the case, then today, as you take bread and wine, then it's a reminder of that. It's a reminder of Jesus' death on the cross for you and an opportunity to say sorry for the things that are getting in the way because we all do stuff wrong, don't we? He invites us to live for what is right and empowers us to do that, but we still slip up. And yet his forgiveness is so wonderfully and freely and fully available. You know, someone said to me this week, I turned to Jesus again to this week for the first time in a long time and they really encountered him. And if that's you today, Jesus is here for you and he loves you. Mm. He forgives you and wants to renew his friendship with you. So together, why don't we take bread? We'll give thanks. Thank you, Jesus, for your death on the cross for us. Thank you for your body broken for us. Jesus' body broken for you. Thank you. And as we take communion together, whether you are on your own or whether you are with other people in the house, it doesn't matter. We are one body. That's what Jesus says. And as we take the symbol of bread as his body, it reminds us that we are the body of Christ, the church. And now let's take the wine or the juice. And as we do this, we remember his blood shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. And perhaps you just want to say sorry to him for some specific things that the Holy Spirit brings to mind. With Jesus' body, Jesus' blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And just as we take time to contemplate that, just to give thanks, to reflect, to pray. I'm just going to take a couple of moments. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you 
you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. blood of Jesus Christ Leave behind your regrets and mistakes Come today there's no reason to wait Jesus is sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Come to the altar. Oh, come to the altar. Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with just so grateful thank you thank you that it's just not about us thank you that we don't come and take communion but it's something that you freely give thank you that you forgive us that you wash us clean that you give us a new start mm. and thank you that in this time of uncertainty we have a hope that is steadfast mm. and certain never changing mm. And Lord, how else can we respond but to say that we love you and we're grateful and we just want to give our lives mm. to you again. Mm.
place with you. Come and fill us afresh with your spirit. Mm. Fill us with your presence so that we can go and live and work mm. and um, just shine for you wherever mm. you send us in this week. Mm. Amen. Amen. Hey, it's nearly time for us to go, but thank you for joining with us this morning. And thank you for all your comments and your interaction. It makes such a difference. I know that we, you know, we would love to be together properly and we don't know when that will be. Um, but until then, doing it like this is just so great. And um, we're so glad that you can kind of keep feeding comments back and we can have this kind of interaction. It does make mm -hmm. us feel like we are a community together, a community together, connected together, which we are. And um, if you enjoyed this connection today and you're not already part of a life group, oh, why don't you join one? Say. You great minds think alike. <laughs> so we um, <coughs> have a small group which meet online during the week mm. and it's not too late to join one. Yeah. We have space in our group. I know some of the other groups have space too. You can find them on our website. Yeah. And so do sign up. It's a much smaller experience than this, but you can see people face to face mm. and really enjoy growing and getting to know Jesus better and getting to know one another better. Connection is so important. Doing yeah. this journey together in this tricky season is really important yeah. and so do keep uh, dialing in and you know maybe you're just feeling tired and fed up but remember mm. that there's just such a look there's a lovely sense of uplifting uh, when we meet together in God's presence even though it's kind of connected virtually mm. um, it's still very real and we love this so thank you for all of your comments and for yeah. getting involved one quick heads up uh, next week we start a brand new series that's the end of our be still series mm. it's actually on the book of Jonah it's a very short book and if you had time this week why didn't you read it or at least read the first chapter if not the whole book it will literally the whole book will take you like 10 minutes to read it's really not that long mm. um so yeah just a bit of a heads up we look forward to um, starting our new series on jonah next week yeah and uh, if you remember earlier on when david and allison led us in prayers allison just said this most beautiful phrase she said hope has a name and his name is jesus and so as we go i just want to pray this blessing from romans 16 and it's verse 13 and it says I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. What do you do it once more? And by the way, so it's, church, it's Romans 15. Not oh, 16. I beg your pardon. I'm so sorry. It. Romans 15 and it's verse 13. So Winchester Vineyard Church and friends and family. And who anyone watching, else who's watching. <laughs> I pray that God, mm. the source of all hope, mm. will fill you completely with joy and hope and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Thank you for joining with us. We will see you soon. God Take bless. care. Bye-bye.